So compared to the first two objectives, this is going to be a much longer video. This is part of the Water in the Earth series. In this one, we're going to break down, ha, the different types of erosion, pun. So anyways, um, in addition to that, we're also going to talk about the factors that affect the rate of erosion and how humans play a, a factor in the whole thing. The first type of erosion I'm going to talk about is just general abrasion. And that happens when hawks are hit against other rocks, usually pulled by gravity, winds, whatever. And that causes rocks to hit each other and fracture into sand particles or pebbles can sometimes be picked up by the wind and thrown against other rocks. Or animals and plants can also walk over the rocks and break them down. So people will uh, call abrasion a type of erosion. Now, these will show up in, in or be referenced in other types as well. But in general, you will see structures like that because of collisions, right? Now, wind erosion, and in the test, you will see pictures like this. If you see dunes or arches or pillars, all right, anywhere we're far away from water, in the middle of a desert, wind probably did it, right? And it carries tiny particles, which then hit or break the, break the rock, or the wind itself colliding against the rock slowly pushes over in many, many years, ends up literally uh, breaking the rock down and eventually carrying that over a lot of places to cause sand dunes to form, right? Or arches and pillars and deserts, like I just mentioned. Uh, water erosion is when rain and rivers carve through the landscape, little by little, drop by drop, and create great canyons, as an example of that. Um, uh, washes away the rock, too, and ends up being deposited somewhere else, like we talked in the Objective 2 video. So the Grand Canyon is a great example of water erosion. Wave erosion, obviously near the shorelines. Now that's going to be the most prevailing type of erosion near the shore. Uh, yes, you have wind. It could rain. But the waves are going to far matter more than anything else. And that's when waves literally hit the shoreline and break it. When they hit sand, they can cause berms to form, like you see in the top right picture, where they push the sand away. And sometimes long shore currents, which are currents that go sideways against the, the actual shore, will pick up sediments and then dump them into a sandbar, another kind of deposition. Uh, waves will carve through really hard rock and turn it into sand sediments, although a lot of beach sand actually comes by deposition from rivers nearby. Um, and then carried away by longshore currents and to form the actual beaches. There are beaches which actually form due to waves breaking down rock as well. And then you also have things like uh, arches and pillars uh, near the, the, the rock shoreline due to waves and currents constantly breaking down against that rock. And the way it actually happens is it starts with an arch as that rock runs through and eventually the arch collapses and forms a pillar. So every pillar you see used to be an arch connected some, at some other point, right? Um, but that's all caused by wave erosion. By the way, uh, longshore currents carrying sediments away and eroding beaches is a, is a serious thing. They can both create beaches and form sandbars or erode beaches too. So um, thousands and millions of dollars are spent in the United States to try to keep beaches alive by creating uh, barriers against longshore currents and dumping sediments on the beaches artificially growing the beach as the longshore currents are destroying them. So uh, it's a serious thing. All right, so there's also glacial erosion, and that's when large rivers of ice, which is what they are, slowly rivers of ice. The way it happens is that the bottom layer of that glacier will melt away, and then the gravity of the weight of the glacier will push uh, behind as the bottom layer is melting and hitting the ocean or something else or or fall, going below the, the level where the mountain is high enough to keep it icy, right? So as the bottom collapses, the top flows behind it. And it, it's not as slow as you would think. It actually goes, you know, over decades, it will actually flow all the across from the mountaintop to the bottom where the glacier stops or in polar regions uh, from the continents where the, rim, the glacier is starting all the way where the ocean hits it uh, in Antarctica or, or uh, the – Arctic sh shelves like Greenland and stuff like that. But either way, whether you're talking about a mountain glacier or a continental glacier in a polar region, glaciers will carry enormous boulders on their path and, and drag them across surfaces, grinding everything in its path. And they carve enormous gashes in the mountain, as you can see over here, because of this process. All of these gashes are caused by those glaciers. They, they leave grooves and scratches in mountain ranges. And 
they also carry boulders by long distance. So if you see a rock by itself like that, a giant, look at the person right here. Look at the size of that boulder. Uh, by itself, it's often caused by a glacier actually depositing it there. All right, so that's pretty serious uh, erosion. And it's kind of counts as water erosion. It's just frozen water. All right, animal erosion. Again, animals will walk and burrow and, and dig through the thing and walk on cliffs and cause the cliffs to collapse. And think about a thousands of wildebeest in Africa passing through a place. It's going to erode the soil. It's going to kick up dirt. Uh, it, all of these examples of animal caused erosion. And there are technically chemicals produced by animals that could also help break down rock in your urine. Uh, but primarily, it's going to be because of a physical abrasion against the rocks. You also have uh, ice wedging. And that's a process that happens when there's a tiny crack in the rock and water seeps inside a crack. But when water freezes, it expands. So during winter weather, if water is allowed to go inside of a crack and then suddenly expand, it would actually end up cracking the rock even more leaving something that looks like this behind. Uh, another one is acid rain, and that's a different kind of erosion in the sense that it's chemical weathering, right? And that's when uh, chemicals are by acid, either on rain or carried by rivers, will actually break down rock and form structures like you see uh, in the screen. Uh, statues made of marble, which are really rock, will dissolve completely over, over the years because of this. So it's this... You know, it's a serious thing. Uh, a lot of places in Europe used to have a lot more statues outside. But because of this, they actually have to bring them inside of museums or put a protective coating outside of the, uh, the to prevent it from dissolving due to acid rain. Uh, but rivers can also do this through chemical deposition of uh, chemicals carried into water will actually be placed on the rocks and slowly, slowly corrode it. Marble, by the way, is especially susceptible to it. There's probably a question in the test about that. Uh, and that's what uh, a lot of the actual uh, stone structures and sculptures were made in Europe that are now falling apart over the years. Uh, rivers and streams, of course, are very important for this process of erosion because not only do they carve through and cause water erosion, but they're also the main vehicles by which sediment is carried from one place to another to deposits. So you have like waterfalls carving through the landscape, literally bringing the a waterfall like Iguazu Falls will literally travel over time and recede backwards as it, as it, as it breaks to the plateau that it's falling over, right? And then in that way, the waterfall literally travels over years backwards towards the source of its water and eventually stops being a waterfall. Um, but rapids will definitely do, a, do the job of, of breaking down large rocks. Rivers flood and doing flash floods, you're gonna get massive amounts of erosion that will take place. And rivers do carry those sediments and usually deposit them into the, the sea. Uh, sediments can also be carried by wind. Uh, you know, sand from the Sahara Desert can be taken all across to the opposite side of the world due to wind currents. But uh, rivers will be the primary sources of carrying sediments across the world and eroding the continents uh, with it. River deltas are the places where these rivers will actually meet the sea. And in those places, you're going to see a large amounts of sediment gathering. So the mouth of the Mississippi River, the mouth of the Amazon River are great examples of places where these sediments, which again are like tiny particles of rock or even sand, um, are actually carried by this water and placed. Now, normally you're going to have a lot of nutrients with that too because there's minerals in the rocks and the sediments and there's nutrients from all the runoff that comes from the continents. And so together, this will cause large algae blooms which will feed thousands of organisms and ecosystems near the shoreline of continents, which is why it's another important thing. So they actually, ecosystems of the world, uh, oceans are what covers most of the world. And most of the ocean is a desert of life because there's barely any life in it. But near the shorelines, where these sudden influx of sediments and, and uh, minerals are, are happening, there's gonna be a lot, a lot of life. So that's another way in which rivers are important. Now there's a lot of factors that can affect how fast erosion happens. So if you think about the steepness of the slope, the steeper the slope is, the faster erosion is going to happen. That kind of makes sense, right? So it's going to be harder to hold that, that, that slope together. Uh, if there is more water, like I just said, during a flood, a flash flood, a rainy season, you're going to get more erosion. If there is water flowing faster, like a rapid or doing a flash flood once again, or a lot of wind pushing that water, like in wave erosion, you're also going to get more erosion. If the, the amount of plants 
is changed. That also changes erosion because the plant's roots kind of hold the soil in place. Yes, they can also crack the soil. Yes, they can also deposit chemicals. But for the most part, where you have plants, the soil kind of tends to stick. So a lot of this happens in rivers where one side of the river that has plants will resist erosion. If another side doesn't have it, then that will push the erosion to one side and cause the river to curve. Uh, it's called bank erosion. And that tends to happen because of the variety of roots that you will find on one side versus the other. And so the type of soil also matters. It's going to be easier to carry soil that's finer. Uh, rocks are harder to move and to erode. So that's going to matter too. Last but not least, how do humans play a factor in any of this? So first of all, humans are going to cut vegetation. And so either through deforestation or wildfires, you're going to end up with situations like this where there used to be vegetation and now there isn't. So because trees hold the soil together, that's going to lead to worse erosion and the loss of soil viability and productivity and loss of rock itself too due to this process. So this is seriously happening in a large scale in a lot of rainforests across the world. Uh, ironically, they cut the forests to make the land to plant uh, or make uh, uh, area for cattle to branch on. But then once the trees go gone and there's nothing holding it, the first rainstorm that comes in a rainforest will roll the soil away. Now it's a soil without any nutrients. Not to mention that most of the richness of the soil or the rainforest actually comes from the leaves of the tree themselves. Uh, if it doesn't come from uh, sand from the Sahara Desert that kind of gets deposited by, across the world and uh, kind of seeds the world with nutrients, the rest of it comes from the leaves themselves. So the soil, the rainforest itself is not very rich. So it's a very idea to bad, bad idea to do it in the first place. But anyways, um, they, humans also change the surface. We, do, we make canals, which make the water flow faster. All right. Uh, although we also regulate the flow of water in those canals. So in that sense, we change the rate of erosion. And on the concretes or asphalt surfaces, when water rains, it hits that. It's designed to actually move the water in a certain way. And generally speaking, the water will move faster through concrete and, and asphalt than it will move in dirt or soil. And then once the uh, water leaves the concrete and the soil, it will hit soil with harder speed, leading to more erosion. Uh, we also uh, build roads through mountains and make tunnels. We dig mines and even strip mines, which completely strip the mountain and the plateaus away. Uh, we build dams, which slow down the, the flow of the water and change forever the amount of erosion that happens. Not only that, but behind the dam, any water that's coming and bringing sediments with it all gets gathered behind the dam, which is why over many, 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 many decades, you actually have to dredge all that dirt away from the dam uh, to for it to continue to operate. So because rivers behind the dam are constantly bringing water. But not at the same speed as they used to because the dam is going to change the flow of the river, cause a lake to form, and then past the dam, it will be slower than before because it regulates how much water is, uh, is going through it. So it would change the natural process of erosion that would have been there in the first place. Uh, we also do tend to plant things. Uh, we have large plantations, and that can slow down erosion. Uh, but when we, when we, when we uh, take trees out, we actually make erosions worse. So in all of these ways, you, and by the way, humans also walk around the soil like animals do, and that way also cause erosion. Uh, but in all, in, and that's actually important if you're going to go on a trail, stay on the path here in Colorado, especially if you're one of my students. Don't erode the, tr the nature further by going away from the trail. Stay on the trail. That way only that path gets damaged, right? Trust me, thousands of people going to a trail will make a significant difference to the actual path. If you people start taking a path that's not in the trail, soon but soon, that's eroded away, all right? So that's kind of how that works. But altogether, these are different ways in which humans affect the erosion. So in this video, we talked about a lot, lots of types of erosion, the rates and factors that affect that, and how humans uh, have a role in all of this. And this is not a, a comprehensive list. Uh, humans affect the world in a lot of other ways, which also end up affecting erosion, including climate change, right? Which is gonna cause more terrible storms and more erosion because of it. So uh, this is not, this is just a tip of the iceberg, uh, which uh, is a glacier hits the ocean, never mind. Anyways, I hope you found this helpful. And uh, this is pretty much it for the objectives on this content assessment. 
And I hope you uh, see you next time. Don't do anything that would make him more proud.